Hello again, Glenn Walford here and welcome to the Franchise Everything podcast where we talk about everything and anything franchising. And today we're actually in Melbourne with Malcolm Rees at World Options Australia. Malcolm, thank you for uh, for having us down here. Well, thanks for coming, Glenn. Excellent, mate. And today we're going to talk about a few things, but the number one thing we're going to talk about in this podcast is the World Options business model, the franchise business model. So a lot of people might not know of the brand that much. Can you, can you describe what the role of the brand plays in the marketplace and what you're all about? Right. Well, look, we've been described as the Travago of shipping, right? So, so a customer can go and purely by putting in postcode to postcode the dimensions and weight, get a comparison over multiple carriers at the same time, mm-hmm. which saves them a lot of time and and money in the sense of because if you want service or you want uh, if you want price mm. and and yeah, you know, it's a commodity and the pricing is, is important so to customers. Shipping and what sort of stuff we're we talking about shipping? What's oh, we're, we're talking anything that's manufactured. So e-commerce is a big thing. Also, um, yeah, you know, one of our key industries is uh, auto spare parts. Anything you can put on a car. Uh, motorbike, um, uh, boat, that sort of thing, any accessory, and all this manufacturing that goes on in, in the uh, in the heartland of, uh, of Australia industry as well. Yeah. So, so it just virtually anything. Um, there's yeah, you know, some restrictions of yeah. dangerous goods and that. So, so you're connecting customers who obviously need shipping. You're connecting them with solutions to that shipping. Is that that basically how that, it works? That's correct. Yeah, yeah, because our franchisees act as uh, as a shipping consultant. Okay. Um, and freight and shipping, yeah. You've got a lot of small customers who don't deal with uh, you know, a lot of shipping, so they don't have a shipping department, and you've mm. got somebody who's playing multiple roles in a company, and, and we provide the the ability for them to use us as, mm. as a sounding board on a lot of their uh, because issues. Because shipping for many people can be quite challenging, hasn't it? it can be quite, it's a whole, almost a whole different language and a whole different knowledge base, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah no, it can be. And, Which is and, good for yeah. you because that's why you exist. Well, well that, that's right. And look, yeah, we... We deal with people who who are dealing with um, selling the goods, packing the goods, and that sort of stuff, and they they don't really do a lot of shipping. But the other time, how do I insure something? Is this insured? Uh, can I get insurance on it? Have I packed it correctly? All mm. this sort of stuff, and we provide that sort of uh, feedback. So, um, just to, we'll segue a little bit. What's, so, what does a franchise owner typically do? What does a day look like for a franchise owner when they're helping SMEs? I gather doing this sort of stuff. So, what, yeah. what does it look like? So, so, so the. The thing is, the primary role is to sell and mm-hmm. to sell. And what we try and do with the franchisee is take away uh, a lot of the problems in shipping because it is it is it can be a problematic if it gets delayed or lost mm. or damaged or something. Right? And so we try and get them selling eighty percent of the time. Mm-hmm. And, and, they, and that's finding new small yeah, business customers. That, that's that's exactly right. Yep. And so they're out there. Um, uh, looking, mm. looking for customers in the sense of how do I prospect for for new leads and that sort of stuff, and we've mm. got a great training course course on that as well, and we'll cover that probably later. Yeah. Um, and so they do that, and then during during the course of the day, a customer may ring up and say, "Hey, I've got a shipment uh, here. I just don't know what to do with it. How do I do it?" So they give them some advice, or they could they could we've got a, a service support uh, button on our shipping portal. If they fill that in, the customer the the franchisee gets that. He'll answer it if he can if it's too difficult he passes on to our support port mm. group we we do all the hard work of the, the of contacting the carriers and all that sort of stuff right mm. give the answer back to the franchisee and then he carries on with his day mm. right? so when so the, the key thing from a customer perspective is obviously advice that the franchisee is giving them and, and what is is just much easier for them because i know having tried to ship stuff before it's not not an easy thing to do if yeah. you're not in the game. Look, look if if you're sitting there saying, oh, "I want to see what is the cheapest price to ship that yeah. thing over there," right? As yeah. an example, right? So you've got an option. So who are the carriers? That, so TNT and Star Trek and Border Express and Allied Express. And you look at this and say, "Well, okay, do I ring every one and get a quote, mm. or do I go on to a multi carrier platform?" Like ours, yeah, uh, and you can t- simply put in the dimensions, the weight, the postcode, the postcode, and it will bring back a multi-carrier uh, quote uh, within seconds. Mm. Uh, and instead of making four telephone calls and saying which is the best, you've done it purely probably within about twenty yeah. seconds. So how you find how are your franchise owners finding customers? Then is it just purely going out and visiting businesses and everything? Is that because businesses wouldn't know about it? Obviously, yeah, yeah. would they? How do they find? How are they finding you? So it's the effort. So, so we have gone out and bought a list of of um, SMEs in Australia, mm-hmm. who are genuine SMEs. Um, when well, I say there genuine, are a lot. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> and there's a lot. There's two point two million SMEs in Australia, but I reckon there's about one point five million genuine because you've got a lot of SMEs yeah. who are out there who do you know 
know, the, uh, trust fund and, mm. and superannuation uh, management and that sort of just, stuff, right? They were just vehicles yeah. for... Yeah. So we know the industries which are good for us as well. So we dissect that list. I've got a business analyst who dissects mm. that list. And if you're a new franchisee, we will give you a list of, of, of uh, customers in the ideal industries. So when you ring them and say, hey, uh, do you ship stuff around? Mm. The chances of them saying yes is very high. Mm. And then once you've established that, you're into a, a sales conversation, right, from, from that perspective. And that's that's how we they, mm. they prospect, right? Uh, or they're doing face-to-face selling. This is a real selling game, mm. right? It is, right? Mm. So do you, have to, do you normally go for or want people and people who are best out of the people who have been in sales before or are these skills that you can teach or is this people who are good at yeah. relationships? Well, you know, we, our current franchises come from, from areas. We've got one who used to be a Zombero franchise, right, right. and he's come to That's the, a different, that's yeah, a different yeah, thing to move into now. right? Yeah. And, and so we trained him on that and he just followed our, our, our sales model and business models, the, the selling skills we t- teach them, very successful. Mm. But obviously, having logistics and understanding the background of the logistics, the language of logistics, et cetera, is probably a little bit of a benefit. But selling is the key thing of basically if you've got confidence selling, mm. um, that's, the, that's the critical thing. Mm. And so the, the main value proposition to customers, I just want to go over there again, so the, the ease of use. And what, what about pricing? So how does the pricing work in shipping? Because there's obviously a lot of shipping companies and middlemen and all that sort of stuff out there. How, how, does, how does that work and what role do you play in that part of the business? So the pricing, the franchisee sets the pricing he wants to, he wants to sell. We, we, we give them some guidelines because there's no use selling it. It's so cheap you don't make any margin. Mm. So we get a, a, a major discount from the carriers and these notable carriers, TNT and Star Trek. Because you're providing them volume of Yeah, but we're, yeah. Yeah, we're spending a lot of money with them yep. on, a, on a monthly basis, right? Uh, and so so what what the franchise is, so we pass that on to the franchisee. They do a markup on that and sell it to the customer. Mm-hmm. And gen- generally, if we let's just say we're getting a 70% discount, um, we're buying something which is retail at $100 at $30. He marks it up by 40%. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the customer is effectively getting a 60% discount off a retail price. Mm-hmm. And so that's pretty significant. And And... The thing is that we focus on SMEs because they don't have that bargaining power mm. of of a large shipper, right? And so if you're only shipping 15 to 20 to 30 shipments a, a month, you just don't have that bargaining power. Yeah, because you, know, you call these places and they say, have you got an account with us? If exactly. you send something, don't you? Well, look, yeah, I, I know that some of the carriers, I won't name them, but yeah. they, they won't get out of bed unless you're, you're spending more than $5,000 a week with them, right? Mm. <laughs> right? Yeah, and that's hard for a small business. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly, because yeah. they don't, then they're, how do I ship stuff? And yeah. they're, they're paying quite high, high rates, yes. So, so do you find for your franchise owners for margins and stuff like, that, stuff like that, do you find that the the customers mainly who are sticking with your franchisees are there for price or is it for the service and relationship or what What are you finding is the feedback from the field that that their customers are getting the most out of the relationship? It's, it's a combination, Glenn. It yep. is. Um, it is. It, the, most people will buy on price. Mm. Um, but if they've had a bad experience with the carrier, they'll they'll strike that carrier off and they'll go to the next next one. It could be more expensive. Mm. So there is a bit of trade off of service and price, uh, and and but the relationship of being able to call the franchisee, email the franchisee, and get an answer of I've got a problem because logistics is great. You you ship something and and it goes completely right. You, you, you're a hero. You're a hero. <laughs> you're nothing nothing happens, world. right? And it but just it goes wrong. Goes. But when it goes mm. wrong, then that's when our support team uh, mm. uh, step in and basically do that. And that's the key thing. So that whole relationship and some of the value adders as we do, we've got a protection plan cover for which is provided free of charge up to $1,000 uh, for a concern. Anything over $1,000 of value must be insured separately. Mm. But but we've got that and that's free of charge to the customers as well. And that's mm a big seller and that's something which you know we are always of the thing what are we going to sell the customer and the thing is that we always say well we're going to help the customer and how are we going to help them and that's the excitement of doing this job Mm. is we're always helping customers right and what value added can we do that others aren't doing and and that's that's really what we mine to to try and and give to to uh, look for our customers yeah yeah, so what feedback do you get from customers what they want what are their what are their frustrations so those customers that you're helping that say a franchisee could come in and say, well, these are the things I can really relieve you of. What are, what are the main things that SMEs are always, I mean, I'm one myself, so yeah, I'm yeah. sure I've got a few, um, that uh, the frustrations are having? Well, look, um, 
One of, one of them is basically saying, if I've got a problem, mm. I'm on the phone Who do I call? At, at an hour mm. uh, if, if, to trying to get an answer from it, same as banks and all that yep. sort of stuff. Yep. You know, and, and an enormous frustration. And you don't – we've got access to to, um, to key account desks and that sort of mm. thing, so we get a faster service. Plus also we've got we've got uh, a support centre um, mm. that basically does all that, that, that work for the customer. So that's one thing we take away. And then the other is basically how do I, you know, save time of getting quotations and Mm. And when you can go and say, I've got seven carriers I can choose from as an example, and mm. I like that one, or I've had a bad experience with that one, I want to go with this one, and it's easy like that. So you're agnostic about carriers, aren't you? Does, does, it, does, it, bother, does it matter to you at all? No, no? it doesn't, no. Yeah. No, no. It, it's, it's down to the customer, and, and some customers had a bad experience with one carrier, yes, so they, they refuse to they, go that they, one. They, they don't want to go there. Yep. But so we've got, you know, the number two there, we've got the mm. number three and the number four, right, uh, from from those perspectives. Mm. And, and so it's it, that that's what they really like about it. Okay, excellent. So for a, to become a franchise owner in the fra- in the business model you have, what's the training look like? So what is it? What's the term of it? What's involved in it? So how do you take someone? Let's say a person who's not even in logistics at the moment has got no idea about it. I could train you. Yes, you could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. How, what does that look like? So, so what we do is is we take them through a three day face to face induction course, mm-hmm. and and that's to either done myself or Andrew, who, who you know, right? Yeah. Uh, or both of us at the same time. And if if we got three or four franchises, we'll do it in a group in this in this room, right? Uh, otherwise, we'll do it face to face, right? And we like to bring them into the into the office here, meet the people. And yeah, you know, would de- demo the, the place. So, so that's at three days face to face. That's mm-hmm. everything from an induction, who we are, what we do. Um, yeah, and basically, you, know, you don't know anything about it, um, uh, even though you've done the disclosure document, mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff, right? Uh, and we go through. And the biggest part of this is selling skills. Yes. And, and the selling skills is is critical. And so we, we've got a, a high-end um, sales um, training program. I used to be the global head of sales for DHL. Strangely enough, ours mm. does look a little bit like the DHL training from that perspective. But in not that too aspect. much. <laughs> no, exactly. Mm. Um, uh, and and so that's the key thing. And so, so we, we go through portal training. We go through, through um, uh, you know, what's your revenue journey look like? Um, and what can you expect and what's the productivity meant to be looking like uh, and, you know, all those subjects. And so uh, what's all the administration portal look like that you get access to and how do I get paid and and, and, mm. and that, right? So we've got 19 different modules we use uh, and with that. And so so once that's done, we have just invested in a, in a thing called the Knowledge Hub, um, which we've branded that as ours, but it's a learning management system. So we're just putting all our face-to-face training on this. We'll intersperse it with quizzes and also at the end of that you can get certified as as a world mm. option specialist right and so that you you've passed you've you've learned it's part of this whole training adage of you know tell them what you're going to tell them tell them again and and tell them right mm. <laughs> right and, and and so with that repetition uh, yeah, wins yeah repetition wins it does yeah. right and then also we do have a whole lot of um uh, other support as well. So we're just doing a whole series of videos and would be for, for customers as well. How does the shipping portal work? You know, mm. it'll be indexed and say, if I'm looking for, how do I do uh, bulk shipping as an example, or how do, how do I do residential shipping? That, mm. that, that, those sort of subjects. So we all next. So we're doing a whole series of about 35 videos, which are again are going to be on this knowledge hub. Mm. And then we've also got uh, a whole lot of series about what's good customer service for our support people. Um, how do I do great prospecting for for franchisees as well? Uh, what makes a good salesperson? What are great sales questions to mm. do? So we've got all these other courses as well, which we're, we're putting yeah. out there. So okay, so the three days. So it's it's a it's a fairly short. Training period, isn't it? So, what, what's what's the ramp up then into the business out, out from that point? Yeah, so so then you're into the marketplace, and so what we say is, look, go out and you know attempt to do it. Right, mm-hmm. we'll come and see you. And so there you go. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because <laughs> yeah. unless you well, so doing it, you don't you know, know what you you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. Right. So you get out in the marketplace and and follow the process which we've taught you. Then we'll come, either Andy or myself will come mm-hmm. and and basically spend time in the field. With the franchisee as well, yeah. so so you're not out there by yourself, yeah. you, know, you know, trying trying to find leads and that sort of stuff. So that level of support, then it's all back into the knowledge hub and, and that, and so mm. it's continual learning. So is it um, is your business? Because I know many franchise businesses are structured differently. Are your franchise partners always all in, or do people come in part time, or is it just full time straight out? How does that look any different? Oh, look, it yeah. 
our model of sales and, and effort mm-hmm. equals reward, right? And you can't, well, you can work it part time, but the thing is, that you won't get the same mm. return on it. So we say, if you're not going to work it full time, you know, go get a job where you don't want to have to work so hard, right? <laughs> and that because it's just total, total truthness and honesty. Yeah, 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 exactly. And, yeah. and yeah, I, I'm not sitting there just trying to sell franchises mm. to p- and turn over the franchise. I'm out there trying to get a successful franchise, somebody who has got the the propensity to success for, mm. for this, right? And with that, and so, yeah, I've turned down franchises before and said, oh, look, I just don't think that you've got the personality to mm. do this. Yeah, The whole thing is customers buy on trust. Mm. And and if you're not trusted, and, and this whole relationship management, all we're looking for is really good salespeople, mm. right, who've got integrity. Mm, excellent. So are they normally, just as we wrap it up though, um, is it normally just a, a one-person business or do you find fr- franchisees who are growing bigger accounts adding other team members on to service and help support and grow more sales in their areas? What is it? No, no, like? no, that's exactly right. So our largest franchisee, has, uh, he's based here in Melbourne, mm-hmm. um, but, yeah, he's, he's he's doing very, very well and mm-hmm. he's got uh, three people working for him. Yep. Uh, and he's he – he he loves to still get out and sell, mm. but he doesn't have to do that. He's got he's now got a sales team and he's got a support team. Mm. Um, but you know he's he's uh, we don't want him totally immersed in in managing his business. I want him also selling because he's great at it, right? Yep. From from that perspective. So yeah, you've got that. There's also if you go away on holiday or something like that, and you want to take six weeks in Greece or something like that. Well, well, you're looking at we can actually manage your customers for you while you're away as well. Wow. That, that's a key thing as well. Oh, I think that's huge. I've I've haven't I've heard only a handful of franchise brands. A couple that have spoken before having like a four weeks holiday a year that they help manage the territory of the franchisee. So you're, I think you're the second one I've come across. Well, that's, that's good. Got, that is at least <laughs> thinking about that. Yeah, and, yeah. I, and I think it's really important for small business owners. They need a break. Oh, look, exactly. We mm. expect we expect our franchisees to work hard for themselves, mm-hmm. right? And with that, you can't be working hard for uh, 365 you know, for, yeah, 365. No. Take a break and and do it. And we've got the support system to allow you to do that. Excellent. All right, Malcolm. I think that's a really good chat about word options. No doubt we'll talk more about it soon. No, sure. Excellent. Thanks. And that's it again for the Franchise Everything podcast. If you like this sort of stuff, please subscribe, share, do all that sort of stuff there. It really supports the podcast. And we'll catch you again in the next one soon.